Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is going to be a video series on drip irrigation. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over all the basic components and how I think about planning uh, and uh, all the little parts and pieces you need to kind of get started on this. Drip irrigation is super, super easy once you answer a few basic questions. And the first question is how you get in your water. You know, are you hooking it to a water hose? Are you hooking it to a water faucet? Are you gonna put some sort of timer on it? Are you gonna put it into your existing irrigation system? All of those things. And I'm gonna start uh, with this vegetable garden in the next video and put in a drip system in this vegetable garden that's just hooked up to a water hose. And then I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to expand it to do a blue, some blueberries I have over here, a perennial border that's going in over here, and some shrubs that are going in up there. And each of those will have different techniques that I'm using to irrigate in those spaces off the same system. And then we will take that and plug it into my existing irrigation system. So over the course of several videos, you'll see all the different techniques. I'm also going to be doing my front porch as well with containers and baskets. So if you want to take a vacation in the summer and not ask a neighbor a favor, uh, maybe that will be a video you'll want to tune into as well. But like I say, in this video, I'm going to show you a lot of the basic components and I'll link all the stuff in the description of the video if you want to uh, get it from Amazon or just take a closer look at them. So there are a lot of little parts and pieces, but they really are designed to go together very, very easily. Uh, in drip irrigation. Uh, all these components fit together super, super easy. You don't even need very many tools. I usually will have a very good sharp pair of pruners because you can cut any of this pipe, any of these different types of pipes easily with a good set of pruners. And then there's little punch tools uh, that you can use that you just punch holes in the main distribution line to connect the smaller feeder hoses and uh, drippers and bubblers and all those kinds of things that I'll get to in a minute but all of these tools are very inexpensive this one right here i think is 92 cent or something like that and all it is is a little punch hole uh, punch piece on the end that punches a hole in that pipe so then you hook a fitting to it and then you can put your distribution line on it after that uh, this tool right here is a rainbird tool that allows you to not just punch the hole but go ahead and actually put the barb piece in at the same exact time uh, a little more expensive, maybe five dollars. Uh, but once you have one, you have one, and you don't need to repurchase it. So, tools very inexpensive. Of course, until you get to the part where you're hooking it up to a main irrigation line and all those kinds of things, and the tools obviously become shovels and glue and PVC pieces. Okay, so where are you hooking it up? Uh, I have used this timer uh, for several years. Uh, I'm actually curious as to how long the batteries actually last in this. This, these two batteries I put in here years ago and I've used this over and over. I used it at the nursery for a long time to move some well water at night. And it actually laid on the ground for some period of time with the hose hooked to both ends of it. Uh, and then I used it last year in a container irrigation video that I did where I did my vegetable garden and containers on my back porch. You can find that on my channel pretty easily. These are super, super easy to set. Uh, you can set the clock, the start time, how long you want it to run, how often you want it to run and then turn it off anytime you want to turn it off. And you can still use a, a hose on the bottom of it if you want to, because you can just set it to, uh, to turn it on while you're, uh, you can hit the manual button right there and use it manually anytime you need to use it manually. But that hooks directly to your faucet, or I guess you could run a hose from your faucet and just hook it up wherever, closer to the irrigation. Super, super easy. Then on any of these drip irrigation systems, you need a pressure regulator. And a pressure regulator will hook onto either directly to your water hose or the timer if you're using a timer, just like this. It's just a hose fitting, okay, just like that. This reduces the pressure and puts a more consistent pressure on the line. All of these parts and pieces are just little barbs uh, poked, into the, to, uh, poked into the main line. And if you had a ton of pressure on it, it would just start blowing all these pieces apart. So keep that in mind, you do need a pressure regulator. Uh, this particular pressure regulator has a screen filter inside of it. You need a screen filter as well. So uh, if you can find a combo like that, uh, that's good. And then you hook to your, uh, uh, start to hook to your distribution pipe at that point. If we were, at some point, we're gonna hook into my main irrigation system and we'll put an electric timer on it. And where it comes, 
where the water comes through out of the other side of this, it needs to have a filter system on that and I'll show that to you at the time that I hook this into my main system. But for now, I'm going to just use a, uh, a, a filter and pressure regulator on the end of it and I'm just going to be plugging my hose into it for now. And that's my plan to uh, start these videos off and then we'll get more complicated as uh, time goes on. So starting here at my screen filter and pressure regulator, all I need is this barbed hose adapter right here. This is one end of it is just like the end of your water hose, just like that. And the other end right here is just a barbed end that slides into this distribution pipe. Okay, this is a 17 millimeter distribution pipe. At the end of this pipe, and I'm gonna go ahead and make, I'm gonna go cut a piece off. We'll build some things out off of this pipe right here. Okay, so we'll pretend this is a big giant irrigation system right here. And I'll take this end piece right here, which is basically just a figure eight. You can see that right there. I slide it onto the end. I bend that over. I slide it back up onto there. Now we have a dead end. So this is hooking to the water source. Water is gonna be in this pipe right here. And then from here, we'll distribute water where we wanna distribute it. Okay, last year in the vegetables, I had them in containers and I use these little bubblers. Uh, this is a bubbler. It's just a little, it, this part right here pokes down in the soil. A little black pipe hooks over to the side of it, just like this runs and connects to the line right here and it sprays water out in some sort of pattern. You can buy these with 180s. You can buy them that are 360s. And then up here on the top rotates around and you can adjust how far out it sprays. The only real reason to use these is with container plants uh, sometimes and with ground covers. And I will use some of these, but this is a bubbler uh, and it's not really drip irrigation. I'll use my drip irrigation system to distribute the water, but it's actually just a fan of water spraying out. I prefer not to use this, especially on my vegetables, because I don't want the foliage on my vegetable plants to be wet. I want to apply the water right at the ground. So like I say, I want to put the water directly on the ground. And there are several different ways to do that. The way I'm going to do it in my vegetable garden is this right here is a quarter inch pipe that has drip emitters built into it every six inches. Right there, right there. When we put this, we're gonna attach this to this main line or this distribution pipe that we have here. And then we're gonna run this in rows in the vegetable garden. And every six inches here, water is just gonna drip, 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 drip out of these emitters. This works absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna do this in the vegetable garden. These are six inch spacing on quarter inch pipe, okay? You can get different emitter spacings on the different size pipes. This right here is what I always used doing landscaping for shrubs and trees, and you'll see me use this all over my yard. This is a 17 millimeter brown pipe, and if you can see right in here, little holes in here, they're 18 inches apart. We can get this tubing with these emitters 18 inches apart, 12 inches apart, and maybe even six inches apart. I can't remember on the 17 millimeter if we can get them that close together. But this is the tubing I'm gonna run around the trees and shrubs, and I'll just do a loop around each shrub. We'll see that when I get to that. Uh, for the vegetable garden, I want the spacing to be quite a bit closer. And again, we're just gonna be laying this water directly on the ground. I'm gonna run several rows down the middle of the garden off of our distribution pipe right here. So how do we hook any of these, any of this tubing up to our distribution line? These little tools I showed you, which just are little points on the end of them, you poke them into the pipe. It takes very little effort really uh, if you have a good sharp one once these, these things can dull over time. But it makes a perfect little hole in the side of that pipe right there. In this case, I'm going to use this T right here, and it is just a barbed T, and one end of this will go directly into that hole that I just created with some effort, but not a crazy amount of effort, right there. Now I can run two lines off of this. I can get a piece where it's just a straight 
uh, barb on both ends to, for connecting one, or I can use a T and go ahead and connect one on each side. But I'll go ahead and show you this quarter inch tubing connects directly to that barb just like that. And then let's go ahead and cut this off. Let's assume we've run out about 25 feet of this line uh, down one of our rows in the garden. After we slide that onto that barbed in, uh, now we're gonna have our uh, pipe is gonna have emitters every six inches running all the way up through the vegetable garden row. At the end, we need to terminate the water here. Um, you can just buy these little stoppers for the end of it. There is actually also, should have had this open already. There are barbed ends that are also drip emitters. If you want the very end of it to also be an emitter, I'll slide one of those into the end of it. And just a little bit of effort and there you go. Water will come out of each of these emitters and at the very end as well. And we'll run maybe four rows up each aisle in the vegetable garden and easily, you know, quick and easy. Okay, another thing that we could add to this system, this is a shutoff right here. And you'll find that the vegetable garden is gonna to need to be watered quite a bit more than the blueberries are. So when you see me do, add, start adding things for the vegetable garden, I'll put in some of these shutoffs where I can by hand uh, shut off any lines on this system. So again, I would just cut this line and plug that in there and then this thing just turns on and off. There's a little arrow on it that shows you whether you have it on or off at any given time. Okay, so that's how we would hook on to our distribution pipe for doing drip irrigation where the drippers are built into the line, okay? If I was gonna do this main line over here, the 17 millimeter, I would have cut this distribution pipe and put this T in here instead, and then we would have run that pipe off of here. So you'll see that coming as well but any kind of fine you know low volume stuff like the vegetable garden we'll just use this quarter inch pipe right here okay the next thing you'll see is what if you wanted to just water one plant this black line uh, doesn't have any emitters in it so let's say i wanted to water a hanging basket and i'll run it up the wall on this porch somewhere i'll show you that when we get to that i'll run one of these black lines up and over the basket and we'll hook it in, into the main line pretty much exactly the same way that we did the other one. We'll run it the distance we need to run it. And uh, I need to cut this end off here. Um, we'll run it the distance we need to run it. And then we'll use individual drip emitters. These are actually color coordinated. I don't know if you guys can hear this birds over here. I've got a nest of birds that are so noisy behind me. These blue emitters are a half gallon per hour that's how we measure drip irrigation is gallons per hour. This is a half gallon per hour. You can get a one gallon per hour. You can get a quarter gallon per hour emitters. And a lot of times you'll have to change them during the season. If you find your baskets at a half gallon per hour, if that's too much water, then you can go and uh, reduce them to a quarter gallon or if maybe you need to increase it. And sometimes if you increase it, you just put a, a second emitter into the pot, but they will definitely have to be adjusted. There's no possibility that you will uh, put emitters in all of your containers and your baskets and have them all watered evenly because some of your containers will be in more sun and so on and so forth. There is some changing of these during the season, but again, they're just barbed fittings that go on to the end just like this and drip, 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 drip into your container, into your pot, into whatever. And that's basically all there is to uh, this drip irrigation. When, when we run the lines on the ground, uh, I'll bury the, the distribution line in my mulch when we put that in. These lines that are going through the vegetable garden are just going to be right on the top. And I will use a sod staple. Uh, this is a sod staple right here. This is, this is, you can buy these anywhere. Um, it's just a staple that we use to holding down ground cover cloth or uh, sod or those kinds of things. They actually make them with a little bit of a curve in them. And this is better for this pipe so that you don't end up, you know, putting a kink in it by flattening the pipe out with that flat top. So if you can find these curved ones, these are better and we'll just poke these right down into the ground to keep the pipes where we want them when we lay them in. But that's the basics of it. Once you figure out 
you know, where you want to uh, tie into your water. And I would recommend you just get one of these little Orbitz clocks. This only has one connection here for running one system. These clocks also have, have it where you can hook up two hoses, three hoses, or four hoses, and then set individual time for each of those drip zones. You hook this to your faucet, then you hook your filter and pressure regulator, and then you adapt it to the distribution line. You run the distribution line that doesn't have any holes in it close to where you're irrigating, and then you poke holes in it and run these little quarter inch uh, pipes, just depending on what you're trying to do. Again, I'm trying to uh, just lay water directly on the ground and pretty close together. This is only six inch spacing. For my vegetables, I wanna keep the entire area kind of saturated. If I'm doing individual pots, we're just gonna run little quarter inch tubing over to them and put drippers in and we'll adjust uh, dripper sizes based on how wet or how dry it is. Uh, really not that big of a deal. Um, I'll add to this as we go. Sometimes you may need to use one of these bubblers. Like I said, again, these just attach right onto the end of this. I could cut this anywhere and attach that to it there's a barb on there just like anything else, and it just pokes down in the pot and sprays a fan of water out over your plants, just like that. It does keep the foliage wet, so there's a lot of things I probably would not want to use that bubbler on, including my vegetables. I had to do it in my containers last year, and I went over that in that video, but this is going to be much better this year, laying the water out directly on the ground. So that's the first video in this series. In the next video, we're going to slap this uh, distribution line down and uh, have a hose hook up and run these through the vegetable garden. Thanks for watching.